Hi, and welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Omar DeWin, communications executive here at Surveyor Real Estate. Joining me in the studio today for a talk on interior design trends and home staging tips is the one and only Debbie Traven, founder of DLT Interiors. Debbie, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Excited to have you here. And uh, in Miami, you just mentioned off air that um, you and your husband just relocated here. So welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we're loving it. How are you enjoying uh, your time so far? We absolutely love it. We actually feel like we're on vacation every day of our lives here. Miami has a, a great way of, of doing that, um, having that impact on people. So uh, welcome to, uh, to Miami. So Debbie, tell us a little bit about um, you and your background and in, in um, interior design and sort of what brought you uh, to today. Okay, so um, my background way back was I started in high-end um, couture fashion. My grandfather actually had five men's clothing stores in the garment district, which was a very hot neighborhood at the time. Not now, but at the time. And my grandmother was um, an interior designer. And they lived on Park Avenue. They were very successful, kind of like a, um, you know, kind of a, a uh, you power know, couple. yeah, power couple and uh, socialites <laughs> and all that. And she catered to the Park Avenue set. Okay. And um, her style actually was very formal. It was like, you know, I'd go to her apartment. It was like being in the Buckingham Buckingham pa Palace, actually. <laughs> it was like, oh, don't sit there. It felt like it was roped right, off look, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch, don't sit. And uh, my style is actually very different. And um, so it was high-end fashion in the beginning, you know, going to Italy, picking fabrics and all that kind of thing and um, dealing with clients, putting out, putting all the outfits together and coordinating the tie and the shirt and the pants and the whole thing. I would have to number, uh, you know, we have like, um, like appointments uh -huh. that the, uh, the customers, uh, customers would come in and I would have to mark one for the tie, one A, what for the shirt, you know, and put, and they would hang it on the hanger mm -hmm. and put all their outfits together. And, and it basically is similar to, um, home decor. It was, you know, the fashions and the colors and all the fabrics. So how many together. years ago did you make that official transition into, uh, in home decor interior design? A long time ago. So then um, I stopped working in my dad's store, um, like before I had, like after I had kids, right after I had kids, actually. Okay. And the transition was when we moved to Westchester. Mm -hmm. We wanted a beautiful property, but ne not necessarily the house was that important. You know, we knew that we could make a beautiful home mm -hmm. because they have limited property in Westchester, especially Scarsdale. Okay. And so we were looking for a beautiful property and we found one like a gorgeous park like piece of property with a gorgeous pool and everything, but the house had to be basically knocked down. Wow. And um, we had, and friends and family would be like, you know, who's going to do this? Like, who, are you going to hire an interior designer? I mean, this is a huge project. And um, we had an architect, but when it came to the interior design, I felt like I could do this. And I didn't have any prior experience at all. And I just was like, no, I got this. And so how did you, <laughs> uh, how does one approach <laughs> that? Like, what, like, where do you start? What's the mindset? It was the colors. First, I started with the colors. Uh -huh. And... Um, I think I started with the rugs. I actually I put the rug, uh, found some rugs, and I built it off of those colors. And then I found the furniture, and one piece kind of kind of leads to the next. And then all the colors in the house. It was a large house, and I just kept one color scheme, mm -hmm. but I kept it. And you know, they basically all the colors flowed throughout the house but look different in each room. I like it. So it's interesting starting with, you know, with the rugs and sort of these foundations and then building yeah. up from that. I guess the furniture and whatnot would be dictated by your preference and in, in styles, right? But that's cool. Yeah. So, you know, you pick one thing, it could be a fabulous piece of fabric that you love for the window treatment. And then that would dictate, you know, matching with the um, pillows and the, you know, the sofa and everything else. It kind of just one thing leads to another and it, you know, you bring it all together. And so after going through this, um, you know, with your home, then you realize, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. So I enjoyed it. And most people said like for a project of this size, you know, you would fight. My husband actually was really excellent at it too. He did all the foundation and the flow of the home and work with the architect. And I kind of just did like mostly the interior design. So we actually worked really well together. And then the architect would take in potential clients to show his work. Mm -hmm. And everyone basically, every single person that he brought in asked, who's the interior designer? You must wow. give me their name. 
And it was, and he's like, oh, that's the homeowner. And then um, everyone's, my friends and the family's like, you got to do this. You got to like, look at you, you could look at this place. And then there was like the Westchester Ma uh, Magazine was interested in, um, you know, featuring, featuring uh, my, uh, my, featuring my home. And then that was in the magazine and we were featured. And then I had like five minutes of fame there. And then uh, I, and then people started looking at like, you really need to do this professionally. That is, so it snowballed from it snowballed. there. It snowballed. It reminds me, and, and I think this is accurate, but like the famous Amos story, I feel like there was a similar beginning there. She was just cooking for friends and family and it was yeah. so popular. I <laughs> the cookies and then it just kind of like took off. Exactly. A very random connection, but it's no, it was similar. Of... But I really had like that foundation in my my childhood, you know, Good. with the high end fashion and my my grandma that was an interior designer in Manhattan. So I felt like it kind of has. I have an innate talent right. for this. It runs in the blood. Yeah. And so DLT Interiors. Did you end up uh, forming that with uh, with Michael, your husband, or did I read that incorrectly? Um, I started it on my own uh -huh. and just now, um, I basically did it on my own and now we're moving to Miami and we're going to start collaborating awesome. together because, um, he's going, you know, we're probably going to expand it and he's going to do the business end of it cool. and I'll do the interior design. I know. I, yeah. And I asked, cause um, you mentioned how he was good at it. So I was like, yeah. oh, what a, um, great combo. Right. So, um, okay. Excellent. So you got your start and what would, before we get into the home staging tips and sort of what's happening now. Um, what would you say if you could give me, like, what has changed the most or sort of evolved in interior design trends from then until now? Um, definitely things are much more casual, I would say. And um, everybody, you know, like the kitchen, you know, the open floor plans, obviously, mm -hmm. and just congregating in the kitchen, family room, dining room is all basically one room. And, and it's just a relaxed feeling for family and friends to intertwine. There's no like set formal living rooms anymore. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's doing, you know, no one really needs that or wants that. And um, the use of the space is different. Yeah, that, it's okay. So that makes sense. Because every now and then, um, I'll, I'll put on some uh, Property Brothers or one of the many, you know, shows on, on HGTV. And the, yes, the open uh, floor plan, open format and the, the kitchen, you know, communal space is always at the top of the list. So it makes sense. Yes, that's always number one. We want the open floor plan. So anything else um, in terms of so current trends, right? So you want the open floor plan, but what are the other sort of things to know what's what's hot right now? Um, well, wallpaper is back with a, a vengeance, actually. I mean, it's not your grandmother's <laughs> wallpaper anymore. Uh -oh. So you can do either a bold pattern for an accent wall and entryways, which looks really beautiful, or behind the bed, I usually do like an interesting pattern or, or texture or something behind the headboard in the master bedroom or bedrooms. And um, interesting um, pattern wallpaper is back, as well as... Um, textured vinyls, believe it or not. I know it sounds crazy that vinyls, it's not cheap. It's like high-end vinyls that look like beautiful grass cloths and linens wow. and they're washable and very family friendly or great for, you know, high use, you know, mm -hmm. locations, even, you know, commercial properties and things. Cool. Yeah. And so, they're beautiful. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, they're neutral and, comfortable and, comfortable and they don't look like vinyls is what I'm trying to say. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, so, now, as you, as we mentioned sort of off air, our, our audience, uh, primarily Miami realtors and also consumers of real estate, um, when they're in the process of selling a home, the obviously the curb appeal is important, but inside, you know, creating that wow moment so that the potential buyers can imagine themselves there. Right. Um, home staging is is one of the most important sort of components of that successful sale. Absolutely. Um, so what, what do you have for us in terms of pro tips? Like what, give me like three sort of top line um, uh, things that you can do to make that um, home staging more impactful? Well, there's three major things that ha have to go on and basically everyone has to do it. First is declutter. And mm -hmm. I can't stress that anymore. Declutter, declutter, and declutter. Just clean it, even the kitchen, and take everything off. And, um, you know, just take all your personal belongings and put it aside. And depersonalize it as well. So mm -hmm. family photos are down and neutralize it. And then you want to paint and use a soft, neutral tones throughout the house or apartment. So you're saying um, de declutter, mm -hmm. uh, depersonalize, and then paint. Yes. Neutrals. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Absolutely. And what? Um, oh, so where would you, uh, where would you start if you're trying to determine? So the de decluttering, of course, straightforward and depersonalizing. Um, where would you start in terms of colors, or how does one determine what are the right neutrals uh, for a house? 
Um, mostly we're using like, um, you know, and like I guess everyone's talking about whites and grays. Mm -hmm. And now I think it's more taupe, so a warmer grays, not the cooler ones, like a warmer taupey gray mm -hmm. is really nice. And it's also universally appealing. And then, I mean, I've been working with um, clients for many, many years, and there's no one that doesn't love blues. Mm. So soft blues, I think, it, you know, everyone loves. Happens to be my favorite color. Right. So I'm with everyone you. loves blues. <laughs> so um, I would definitely would do the neutral tones with the taupes and the whites and maybe soft tones of blues. And now in terms of, um, let's say, furniture or sort of what you're seeing is, is, is popular in terms of... Um, the I guess the design or the the type like I know mid century modern was in for a while right I still personally love it I love that sort of Mad Men era yeah right but what um would you say uh, are the current um what what's hot in that department well you know what it's it's interesting that I think that the current trend is now bringing the outdoors in so now you're bringing in beautiful large plants and trees and naturals and organic materials and all that you're going to see a lot of that basically even very very soft neutrals and you know, like natural tones and whites and um, trees and mm. lots of greenery interesting and i think that's perfect here for miami you know in terms of uh, the, both the color palette and sort of the idea of bringing it outside in absolutely um and when you i know since you just moved here um is what sort of was that the approach you took to your your home or what yeah was the style? so you know, every time I move, I basically have to change my decor, of course. Um, now I, I really love the coastal beachy vibe now that I'm like, because we have like a beautiful water view. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't really get to have that in Manhattan. So I'm thrilled that I can have like a really beautiful beachy vibe with some driftwoods and neutrals and soft blues and um, sea glass and colors like that. That sounds very yeah. relaxing <laughs> yeah. and inviting. Um, now, what about what not to do? What sort of advice um, would you have to someone saying, uh, whether for home staging or even, uh, you know, just in terms of the actual living interior design, what are some of the things not to do? Uh, let's see, not to do bold colors. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like even red or any bold colors, I think could be a turn off to be like, oh, I hate that color kind of thing. <laughs> you know, you have to make it universally appealing. Mm -hmm. And no one really is objective to neutrals, honestly. Right. And also soft tones. Yeah. So, I mean, some people love bold colors, but I wouldn't say that would be the way to go. Okay. Yeah. And now in terms of moving forward, uh, where do you think the sort of trends are going? Uh, what, what do you see anticipate for the next like six months to a year? Um, I definitely see more the, the naturals, like I was saying, mm -hmm. and the organic and the colors and the materials um, and the greenery. And um, the floors, you know, were dark before. Now it's all, you know, very wide plank, light floors. And sometimes they're using like interesting tiles on the floors too. Mm -hmm. Actually interesting patterns as well. Okay, I like that. Now, last um, uh, sort of main question I have for you here is in terms of uh, where getting uh, help, right? So some, uh, some customers may use an interior designer um, others may try to do it themselves, like as you did, you know, to, to great success. Yeah. Um, what uh, what do you suggest out there to someone who's wondering, you know, what, what which route should I go? I I mean, obviously, I think it's very beneficial to use an interior designer for many reasons. Most people can't make decisions. It's extremely overwhelming out there. I mm -hmm. mean, to edit down is very overwhelming and it's hard to make decisions and people get stuck and then they don't do anything. They just stop. They buy one sofa and they're done. So um, it's great to have an interior designer come and put it all together for them. And it's also really beneficial because people make mistakes on mm. sizing and scale. And they bought things that are too big or too small and they, you know, basically wasted a lot of money. And it's happened over and over again. Even in commercial, I spoke to the guy and he goes, we spent millions of dollars on things that didn't work, that weren't correct. And um, if you have a professional it, you know, it really cuts down on those mistakes and, and actually saves you money. I like that. It's, and you mentioned commercial. I know that that's a, that's a trajectory that um, is big for, for DLT moving forward. What are the main differences, would you say, if there are uh, between the high-end residential and, and commercial? Um, you think that would be a lot of difference, but I don't think there is. I think it's basically the use of materials. Mm -hmm. In commercial, you need to do mostly custom. 
you know, things need to fit in perfectly or, you know, into that space. And also um, the use of high traffic materials. Like you have to, like on the furniture, you okay. need to do like a sunbrella or perennial fabrics that are kind of indoor, outdoor, you know, you, you know, washable, stain, you know, water resistant and, you know, like just like things that are very um, durable mm -hmm. in the fabrics. So durability, it's basically it's come a long way from from the days of, like you mentioned with your grandmother, of yeah. just very elegant, but you don't touch. Right. Now it's all about durability. It's still looking good, but durability. Absolutely. So I, and actually, I did want to ask you, um, the in one sense, when you're starting a, a project, if you're working with a blank canvas, I think it's maybe easier, arguably, but let's say if, what if you, what do you say to someone who out there has maybe had, um, the, the home is already furnished, right? Okay. But you want to maybe refresh, update. Where does one start or what would you suggest is like, what's the beginning? Um, I do a lot of refreshing also. <laughs> so paint, you have to start with paint, you know, and, um, and then um, basically refreshing the sofa. We can do a slip cover or add some new fresh pillows and add unique new lighting and things like that. But uh, maybe keeping the foundations of the furniture, mm. like if it's a neutral, and then updating in use of accessories like lighting and pillows and window treatments and things. That that's I, I like that. Um, in terms of lighting, what what do you suggest with that? I mean, lighting is crucial. Uh -huh. Honestly, that really elevates the space. I feel like I always so, have the wrong lighting or the wrong yeah, wattage. Or lighting something. is like that's like the eye candy or jewelry in the room. Mm. So for me, lighting is like I love it. It's like because I, you know, like that's like it's you know accessorizing. So you can do like interesting like oversized lighting on the ceilings. You can do beautiful pendant lighting or um, sconces, and um, it depends on the type of lighting, depending on the you know the, the style of the room. Awesome. And Debbie, before you came on, I was looking at your website. I noticed that you had 35 five-star reviews. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. How does um, sort of one do that? And what's been the key to your success over the years? I think the most important thing with my clients is listening to them very carefully. So the first step is in the design process is they bring, you know, inspirational photos and we go through them. And I really get their style and I understand their taste by going through, I ask a lot of questions, what you like, what you don't like, and um, and how are you going to use the space. I really dive deep into what, you know, how they want to use their home and what their dream home is all about. And then I go and execute it. And I'm honestly like 90% on the, you know, on the mark where I put the design board together. They say, I love it. Maybe I'll change one piece or two and we're done. I love so. it. And what happens when, when there's a, a disagreement in the vision from the client at the, at the beginning? How do you help resolve that? Oh, yeah, that happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of my happens. conversation with my wife. And our, and our... Oh, yeah, that happens. <laughs> yeah, and the wife usually wins. So. Yeah, yeah, she, she <laughs> but you know what? I, I she was uh, We were all the better for it. I, I gave her you know the credit in the end. I said, you know what? I, I challenged you in the beginning, but you did right. Right. And so, yeah, so the smart husbands say, you know, go ahead and... Uh, you know, listen to my wife. Right. But then they'll, on the back, you know, in the background, they'll be like, you know, I don't really like that piece. <laughs> and then they'll say, well, my husband really doesn't like this. Can we change it? And I'm like, of course, no problem. Well, the, the key uh, for you guys out there is happy wife, happy life, right? Yes. <laughs> so, Debbie, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a lot of fun. I've been really enjoyed it. Thank you. And for those of you out there that want more information on DLT or uh, Debbie, you can go to dltinteriors.com, is it? Yes. And we'll put uh, the contact information in the show notes. You guys are amazing. I know at residential, commercial, they do it all. So thank you. Thanks, Debbie. We'll see you next time. From all of us here in Miami, where the future is always bright. Until next time.